So Apple Silicon is here. The M1 Max are absolutely fantastic and they've completely upended the entire world of the Mac, essentially. And so that's left a lot of you guys and me with the question, what happens to the Intel Macs? If you're buying a Mac right now, it's a very weird landscape because you're not sure like, oh, should I wait for new, different, more powerful Apple Silicon Macs? Should I buy something used to tide me over? Is Apple Silicon going to take too long and I should just buy an Intel Mac that's used and save some money? There are a lot of questions out there and what I want to do today is try to evaluate where the market is at and which Macs are a good idea and which ones aren't and just try to figure out what the situation is as it pertains to buying a used Intel Mac right now. Today's video is sponsored by Filippo Loretti. Hi, it's me, Fancy Luke. And here's the thing. See, I'm a big watch guy. I wear one every day and I have done for many, many years. But for the past year since I got my Apple Watch, I felt like I was missing something on my wrist. Sure, it's nice to have step tracking and activity and notifications all right at a glance. However, you don't quite get to personalize your experience as much. Evidently, the creators of Filippo Loretti had the same thought when they raised $10 million on Kickstarter to create beautiful, well-designed watches at affordable prices. Every timepiece in the Filippo Loretti collection draws inspiration from the Roman Empire and the art and culture of Italy. And they're affordable. Most watches are under $200, which is a steal compared to most designer watch brands. Plus, if you check out my link in the description below, you can save up to 50% off your first limited edition luxury watch. You can try it for up to 90 days, and if you're not satisfied, you can return it for a full refund. Plus, the first 500 people who watch this video and use my link below will also get a $50 gift card for future purchases. Now that is being fancy and financially responsible. So go ahead and check out Filippo Loretti today. So as far as the issue of used Intel Macs, there are sort of two sides to this. Number one is for people that are looking to buy a new Mac around this time and are wondering whether they should go for something with Intel that's used or something new with the M1 chip. And the sort of flip side of that is people who already have an Intel Mac, maybe like a a recent model 15 or 16 inch MacBook Pro or uh, the 2018 Mac Mini or something like that and are wondering if they should sell their Intel Mac and buy one of the new Apple Silicon Macs. So in this video, we're going to focus more on the buying aspect, whether or not you should buy a used Intel Mac. But if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments and I might make a video discussing whether or not you should sell your Mac and buy an Apple Silicon one instead. I haven't quite decided if I'll make that video, so let me know in the comments below. So the first issue at hand here is depreciation. So you may recall when the 16 inch MacBook Pro came out, I talked a bit on this channel about what I called the 16 inch MacBook Pro effect. And that was basically when the 16 inch came out and it doubled the default storage options and gave us way better cooling, way better graphics, a better keyboard and a better display. It was so substantially improved and so much more affordable that it caused a lot of overnight depreciation in the older high-end 15-inch MacBook Pros. It basically set a price cap for those MacBooks because if you're buying a 15-inch, once you get up to that two, $3,000 price point, you might as well just buy the 16-inch. And so the big question here is whether or not that same phenomenon is going to occur when it comes to the Macs with Apple Silicon. As I've seen in my testing so far, the performance gains are substantial, much more so even than they were from the 15 to 16 inch MacBook Pro last year. I mean, when you look at the base model MacBook Pro right now, it's near as makes no difference, double the performance of the previous model that came out this year. And I know that there are going to be comments below that are saying, just don't even bother with used, you should just buy Apple Silicon full stop. However, let's not forget that 
$1,000, which is what the MacBook Air costs, $1,300 for the MacBook Pro, or even $700 for the Mac Mini is still a lot of money. And there are still people who are gonna say, well, yeah, Apple Silicon, that's all well and good, but I don't wanna spend $1,000 on my laptop. I wanna spend 500. So obviously for them, Apple Silicon isn't even an option. So I've set up a bunch of eBay searches to sort of explore as many angles as I can about this issue. And if I miss anything, let me know in the comments below. I'll probably end up revisiting this topic in the future as the market has some time to mature. But anyway, let's hop in to some eBay searches that I set up to demonstrate the issue. So here is a search that I set up to filter for 2018 and 2019 15 inch MacBook Pros. Now, let me explain why I've picked these. So the dilemma with the M1 Macs is that they are so powerful that if you want an Intel MacBook Pro that is as or more powerful than an M1 Mac, you basically have to go for a 2018 or a 2019 MacBook. It's, it's crazy. The M1 chip will absolutely dump over any Intel Mac with a quad-core chip, even the 15-inch ones from 2016 to 2017, and it can even outpace the graphics in those machines too. So for all intents and purposes, I just would stay away from those. If you do want to get similar performance, not necessarily better, but similar performance to the Apple Silicon M1 chip, you have to go for a six or eight core MacBook Pro. And so that's why I've set up this search. And to make it a little bit easier, I like to filter by GPU because that prevents us from getting any sort of noise in the listings. But basically what you'll notice here is that most of these computers are more expensive than what you would actually find in the new 13 inch MacBook Pro. And even so, they're not necessarily more powerful. For example, this particular model here, $1,300. This is the base model 2018 15 inch. Now this Core i7 will most likely be outperformed by the M1 chip. And so will the Radeon Pro 555X graphics. So already, this is not necessarily a deal that I would recommend taking. And as we scroll through these results, you'll notice it doesn't get a whole lot better. Most of these six core 2018 models that are actually around the same price as the new 13 inch MacBook Pro are probably a little less powerful than the M1 chip. It's crazy to think about because these are only two year old machines that cost over $2,000. But realistically, the M1 MacBook Pro for 1300 bucks, it's probably a better buy. So why don't we go ahead and sort these search results by lowest price? Because I think once you get to a certain point, you could make an argument for one of these devices. Okay, wait, 2018 15 inch for $500? This can't. Okay, so this listing is either not correct or was taken down or maybe someone bought it. But once we get past the weird listings, you'll notice that we kind of stabilize here. $1,200, 1300, 1300, 1300. That's just not good enough, to be honest. I mean, look at these, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, 256 gigabytes, 256, 256, 256. I mean, these aren't upgraded enough to make it worth it. All right, so here's a listing that would actually be interesting. Now, I think this one has sold since the page is coming up blank, but a 15 inch 2019 with 512 gigabytes of storage and with the Core i9. Now, that is very interesting because I suspect that this Core i9 would be, in some cases, a little bit better than the M1, in some cases, possibly a little bit worse than the M1, but for a $100 premium over the 13 inch MacBook Pro, you're getting double the storage, double the RAM, and probably better graphics out of the 560X, uh, as well as you could argue, you know, boot camp, legacy app support might be better. So I could see this maybe making a little bit of sense, but it's still hard to justify in the long term, especially since you gotta keep in mind that if you're buying one of these Macs, you're sort of buying into an unknown amount of depreciation. We don't know how much these things are going to depreciate as a result of these M1 Macs in the next few weeks and months. And we also don't know what's going to happen when the next round of Apple Silicon Macs comes out. So I wouldn't wanna put up $1,400 and then realize, oh man, 
if I had waited a little bit, I could have gotten the new Apple Silicon thing that was better, and now my computer's worth half of what I paid for it. And the weirdest thing is that this is so broadly true across a wide spectrum of the Macs that you would possibly look at. Now, ordinarily, I try to avoid comparing laptops to desktops, but since the M1 is also in the Mac Mini, as well as the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, I figure we might as well just look more broadly at, for example, iMacs. So here was a search that I set up, sorted by low to high price, for specifically any iMac from recent years, 2019 and 2020. So these, these are basically the only iMacs that are going to conceivably match or exceed the performance of the M1, at least for the most part, because if you sort low to high, you'll notice most of these at like $800 have the Core i3, they have mechanical hard drives and eight gigabytes of RAM. I, I would not recommend this product. I mean, the, you can upgrade the RAM, but it requires a full disassembly. Same with upgrading the hard drive. So at $829, not a particularly enticing deal. So why don't we scroll up and see what the cheapest iMac with a six core i5 would actually be. Wow, we're still going. Cracking a thousand dollars here. Still haven't seen anything. Okay, here we go. A thousand dollars, one terabyte fusion drive, eight gigabytes of RAM, the Core i5, and then I think these had the 555X graphics. So the M1 is probably gonna be more powerful in terms of CPU. Uh, the GPU might be more powerful in this iMac by a small amount. Obviously a one terabyte fusion drive is not ideal. And a thousand dollars, you know, at that price, you could buy yourself a Mac mini with upgraded RAM and a display. And quite frankly, that's the route that I would take. It's, it's really, really weird to be in this position where new Macs are outpacing the value of used ones. And hopefully that indicates that these Macs will go down in price. I certainly hope so for the sake of my channel because I'm always out here trying to find interesting and quirky used Macs. And right now, it's not easy to do that. So here's a search that's filtered for 27 inch iMacs from 2019 and 2020. These are more likely to be more powerful. Obviously, once again, we've got some cracked screens, some read description, but down here, this one I think is actually a pretty solid deal. At 1350, you're paying $50 more than you would for a 13 inch MacBook Pro, and you're getting the 10th gen Core i5. This thing will actually outperform an M1. You can also upgrade the processors in these iMacs like I did to a Core i7-10700K, give it some extra range down the line. Obviously it's a 27 inch, so you can upgrade the RAM yourself pretty inexpensively. This is actually a good deal. Uh, these things have really solid graphics too, the Radeon Pro 5300. This is an Intel Mac that I would recommend at this particular price point. 1350 is a good option. Now, if we scroll down here, there are some other 2020 iMacs that are available here. Uh, $1,500, I'd say that's acceptable. Not amazing, but that would that would be a pretty decent, pretty decent price. The problem is that as you go down here, you'll find a lot of 2019s with these one terabyte fusion drives. You don't want a fusion drive. It's not worth it. Personally, I'd rather take a Mac with a 256 gigabyte SSD and then just buy some external drive solution and call it a day. So why don't we set up a search here for a Mac mini? So realistically, if you want to outperform the M1, you're gonna have to go for the Core i7 Mac mini. Let's just do that to be safe. So if we go down to our processor, we filter for the Core i7 eighth generation. Let's see what the cheapest one of those is. A thousand bucks. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy that at a thousand dollars. I mean, sure, it's got it's got more RAM, but for a thousand dollars you could get an M1 Mac Mini and upgrade the RAM. I, I, I would pay I would pay six hundred, seven hundred for one of these i7 Mac minis, but over a thousand, especially when look at this one, 128 gigabytes of storage that you can't upgrade at eleven $1 hundred dollars, yeah, no thanks. Now, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, not everyone is searching for a Mac with performance in mind. Sometimes, you know, you could be looking at a $700 Mac mini and think, okay, that's great. I'm sure those things are fantastic, but I don't wanna spend $700 on my next Mac. I want something a little bit less expensive. Well, honestly, the 2015 13 inch MacBook Pro is still a really good option. So if we look up MacBook Pro, 
2015. We should be able to get a good amount of options here. Let's in fact, for good measure, we'll just go down here and cap our price at $700. And we've got 2000 results. Granted, a lot of them are these sort of scammy listings, but here's one, $600. Keep in mind, you can upgrade these storage. 500 bucks, early 2015. These are still perfectly good machines. Obviously, you're, you're buying something like this. Whoa, 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 $300. What's wrong with this? Does this have like some sort of horrible defect? Okay, well, yeah, it does have some pretty bad delamination. But anyway, you can definitely find uh, Retina MacBook Pros that obviously aren't going to be as good in terms of performance and efficiency and battery life and all that stuff as the Apple Silicon Macs, but it's not like all of a sudden they're useless, right? If you have an older Intel MacBook right now, did you wake up on November 10th and discover, oh my God, it's horrible. I hate it. No, you probably didn't. They're still good computers. They're just not as good. So I guess the overarching question for this video would be, should I or should I not buy a used Intel Mac right now? And my advice is to proceed with caution. We don't know if there's going to be widespread depreciation like there was last year with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's still possible, I think, that the, the higher end, like the iMacs and the 15 inch MacBook Pros, they might end up not seeing depreciation until they're directly replaced by an Apple Silicon model. So until then, I would just say, unless you find some crazy good deal, I would err on the side of caution. So that's my take on the used Mac situation. It's definitely a little bit strange. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. I'll probably post some good deals if I find any over there. So feel free to follow me for that. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely consider checking out my subreddit if you're looking for help on buying a Mac. And with that, I will see you all in the next video.